Well, it is a joy to be able to share with you all and for us to be seeking the Lord on how to see a new generation arise from the youth, from young adults, to see how God wants to apprehend a generation that will seek and find his face. And so I've been asked if I would speak about the role of the church in bringing about this transformation, bringing a generation that will seek the face of God. And it's, the message will be very simple, but I trust it will apprehend our hearts. And we want to look at the fact that the role of the church is to get the young people hungry for God and then spiritually feed them. Ang tungkuling ng sibahan ay gawing gutom ang mga tao para sa Diyos. Agatapos ito, we need to feed them, we need to train them, we need to build them up. But the first and most important thing is we have to show the people that they have an answer they can find in God, that Jesus can be the answer for all of their desires, for all of their problems. Every person desires fulfillment in their life. There is an empty part in each of our hearts that longs to be filled. Ang bawat tao ay may pagnanais para sa katuparan sa buhay ninyo. We want to have satisfaction, fulfillment within our life. And to do that, people search in many different directions. The world offers many options, many possibilities on how we can find happiness or success or fulfillment or purpose in our lives. And so many people are taught maybe social media will fill the needs in our hearts. Facebook, Messenger, Twitter spend three hours a day and, and oh, I've, uh, uh, wow, I've got uh, 293 people on my Facebook. Wow, I'm, uh, I have meaning. Okay, some people just are trying to think if they can in some way seem to be popular that that will be success, that will be fulfillment in life and, and can spend uh, consume all of their spare time on social media and trying to uh, build a, a following. And then a lot of other people will look to movies and TV and entertainment to have fun, to get excitement, maybe to see lots of places around the world. Anything that will entertain and give fun. And we all like fun and entertainment. But is that going to truly fulfill the needs of our heart? You can have fun, 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 and your life is still going to end up empty. So some people turn to drugs or alcohol, trying to find meaning, fulfillment in life. Maybe they get excitement uh, from the drugs, or maybe uh, to escape your problems through getting drunk. Now, drugs and alcohol can seem to be fulfilling as a temporary escape, but it's only temporary, and after the drug is gone, well, somebody is worse. After the alcohol is gone, somebody is worse. And so, you keep trying to fill up that empty place in their life. Or some people get hooked on video games and they spend hours every day climbing the ladders of success and get to level six. Oh, I'm on level six now. Oh, I can destroy dragons. And, and they just are living out their fantasies, just thinking that they have superpowers and they can conquer their enemies. Some people spend hours a day on video games destroying imaginary demons. But if they would pray that many hours a day, they wouldn't destroy imaginary demons. They could cast out real ones. 
And yet, the world offers so many artificial replacements, so many counterfeits, so many imitations to try to fill their life with satisfaction and purpose because young people are searching for purpose, for satisfaction. Nagahana ang mga kabataan, ang layunin at kasiyahan. That's what a person wants. Why? What can be important in my life? And so, the search is on when a young person starts to grow up. I can remember when I was 12 and just turning 13, and I wanted to know, and my friends wanted to know, well, what, what, what can be special in our lives? Uh, uh, could we become real good athletes, or uh, what could we do to, with our lives? And then, on the world scene, exploded the Beatles. Oh, and then we knew what we wanted to do. We wanted to start a rock band, okay? Because they're popular and, and wow! So we practiced three, four, five hours a day and we became a very talented rock band. We became popular, we had good money, we had so many friends and uh, had tried so many drugs to get high, lived an exciting life. But it was only temporary excitement. You ended up empty and more empty to trying these things. Young people are trying to find lasting satisfaction and purpose, which the world cannot give us because God created us. God designed us that the things of the world will not give us full satisfaction. The only thing that can give us full satisfaction is God himself. Hallelujah. Is knowing God, being filled with his love, his goodness, his purposes. And so the role of the church is to help everyone to see that the world does not offer us lasting satisfaction. But if we can get the young people hungry for God, then God will fill them with his everlasting joy, peace, and love. We won't have to try a temporary drug. We won't have to try a temporary uh, relationship and, and end up with, uh, with more problems developing in our lives. No, as we seek and find God, there are more answers that develop in our lives. And so the church needs to be able to present to the young people that Jesus is the answer. He's the answer for everything. But we need to show that to a lost but hungry world. What will they eat? Will they eat Facebook two hours a night? Or will they read their Bibles two hours a night when they have spare time? What is going to seek to give them satisfaction? We need to show them that the things of the world will not give lasting satisfaction because God created us with hearts that have a God-shaped empty place. Our hearts can only be satisfied by God himself. One of the early fathers of the church said many centuries ago, Referring to God, Lord, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. And so we want to lead the young people and people of any age to see that the place of rest, the place of fulfillment, the place of satisfaction for our lives has to be God and following the will of God. And so the church needs to demonstrate there is a living God who loves you and has a purpose for your life. And so how can we reveal that? How can the church show there is a living God that loves everyone? Paano maipakita? 
ang simbahan na may buhay na Diyos na mag- nagmamahal sa iyo. How can we show them this? So let's look very quickly at three things. Number one, we can show people through our testimony, through what we have experienced in life. And can we have, please, some of the brothers and people that will be coming up? Do we have anyone here? Ah, okay. And we have a few very short testimonies of how God changes lives. Mapagpalang araw po sa inyong lahat. Ako po si Ira, isang kabataang kristyano. Gaya po ng mga naririnig nating nakakalungkot po na balita sa kalagayan ng mga kabataan ngayon, minsan ko na rin pong hin- inisip at hiniling na sana'y mawala na lang ako para matapos na ang kabigatan na mula pagkabata ay pasan ko dahil sa magulong buhay at bahay na kinalakihan ko. Yes po, I suffered po from suicidal thoughts. Ngunit ang Diyos po ay tapat na nagligtas at umabot sa akin nung ako'y nasa nakakalunod na sitwasyon. Ipinaramdam niya po sa akin na ako'y nasa kanyang mga bisig at ang salita niya ay nananatiling totoo na may magandang plano pa siya para sa buhay ko. Hallelujah. Hi, ako po si Jeff. Gusto ko magpatotoo na dati po akong addict sa computer games. At nagkaroon po ng panahon na sa kung saan kung saan, saan lugar po ako nagpupunta, uh, para po maglaro, uh, para po sa pera. Ang, ang, ang addiction po na ito ay nakaapekto sa aking relasyon, sa aking mga magulang, at sa aking mga pag-aaral. Pagkatapos ay nakilala ko po ang Panginoong Yesus at binago niya ako at naituwid po ang buhay ko. Nagpapasalamat ako sa aking mga magulang na taing team na, na nag-pray para sa akin. At sa Diyos, uh, para po sa kanyang pagmamahal at awa sa akin. Hi, um, ako po si Jane at lumaki ako sa isang pamilya na hindi uso ang pagmamahalan. Lumaki po akong may galit sa aking tatay dahil sa verbal abuse at madalas na pinagbubuhatan ng kamay dahil sa kanyang galit kahit sa mga simpleng bagay. Ngunit nang makilala ko ang Diyos, pinunan niya ang hinahanap kong pagmamahal. Tinuruan niya ako magpatawad at magmahal sa kabila ng mga pagkukulang ng aking tatay. Uh, magandang araw sa lahat. Ako po pala si uh, Roland. Lumaki ako sa isang magulo at sobrang hirap na pamilya. And then, dahil dito, nagawa ko minsan nung bata pa ako na tinry ko ibenta yung sarili ko. And then, uh, nalulong din ako sa iba't ibang bisyo, immoralidad. Dumating din ako sa point na depressed. Na depressed ako and then gusto ko na mag-suicide. And then, Nung makilala ko si Lord Jesus, doon, uh, nung inabot niya ako, iligtas niya ako, doon na nagbago yung buhay namin. Ako personally, yung buhay ko. Ngayon ay ginagamit niya na ako upang magbigay ng pag-asa rin sa ibang tao through evangelism. And then, nandyan si Jesus, kung sino man sa inyo na merong ganong sitwasyon, lahat tayo kailangan si Jesus kaya niya magligtas at kaya niya magbigay ng kapayapaan, pag-asa sa bawat isa sa atin. Hello po sa lahat. Magandang araw po. Ako po si Gian Paolo Sarte po. Nung di pa po ako nakakilala sa Panginoon, alipin po ako noon ng iba't ibang uri ng kasalanan tulad ng pagnanakaw, panguhold up, pambubugbog at ang kampagpatay. Nalulong din po ako sa mga vision tulad ng alak, sigarilyo at drugs. Dahil dito ay nakulong po ako ng maraming beses. Sa sobrang gulo ng buhay ko, tumawag po ako sa Panginoon at tumingi ako ng awa. Agad ko pong naranasan ang kanyang pagkilos sa aking buhay. Nang makilala ko po si Jesus, pinilaya niya po ako sa lahat uri ng bisyo. Inayos niya ang buhay ko 
at ang maging aking pamilya po. Sa ngayon po, kasal na po kami ng asawa ko. Maraming maraming po salamat sa Panginoon at purihin po ang Diyos. Thank you, brothers and sisters. This is just a small example of how the needs of the young people can get met when we look to God, when God begins to fill our lives. And the church needs to share their testimonies. If you are a committed Christian, you have a testimony. You can tell how God is the answer to your life, how God has changed your life and given you purpose, given you meaning, given you joy, joy that's sometimes beyond what words can say, love that will last beyond what this world can give, peace that is different than the temporary peace of drugs or alcohol. No, Jesus wants to give us everlasting joy and purpose, and we can share that message through our testimonies. Sa pamamagitan ng ating mga patotoo, we can share with everyone around, and they can get hungry for God. They can say, oh, God changed your life. I have many problems. Maybe God can change my life too. Get the people hungry for God. Let them know the world cannot meet their needs, but Jesus is the answer for all of our needs. Amen? Jesus is the answer for all of our needs. Amen? And we want to tell the world what God has done for us and what God wants to do for them. Hallelujah. And so we can reveal there is a living God that loves you to the younger generation through our testimonies. A second way that we can reveal God to the younger generation is through our worship. Sa pamamagitan ng ating pagsamba. Through our becoming a people of worship, learning to love God through song, through, through our lives, through worshiping in spirit and truth, we can see God revealed to the people around us. Jesus said that God the Father desires worshipers who will worship in spirit and truth. From John chapter 4, verse 23. And when people have pure worship, the Lord comes to meet with them. God comes down when people are worshiping in spirit and truth. The presence of the Lord is revealed in a worship service as we, some of us, I'm sure, experienced God earlier today in the worship service of the Hills of Zion worship team. The Holy Spirit wants to be revealed in our midst through worship. People can see God is real. The scripture says the Lord dwells in the praises of his people. So we want to learn how to praise God. Praise him in spirit and truth. So he will come and be among us. I remember when I was a little child before I became a rock and roller. No, when I was really young, uh, my parents would take me to church. And many times in the worship services, I would just feel, oh, there's something different. Oh, the atmosphere. Some, something's, something's really good here in the middle of the singing. Something is, something is wonderful. And I was never told it is the presence of God. But that was what was so wonderful in the worship service. It wasn't the beautiful singing. It wasn't the beautiful instruments. It was the beauty of God coming to dwell, to come and visit his people in the worship. And when I was a popular rock and roll musician, we tried to have experiences and excitement in the music, but it was temporary and it, was, it wasn't good. But when I was almost 20 years old, I was invited to go to a good worshiping church 
And in that worship, I felt God. I felt God's presence as I had not felt or, or, or seen or understood something like that for, for about 10 years in my life. But, but now I could see, oh, that good feeling, that, that something I've been missing. It's in the churches. It's in our worship. It is the Holy Spirit of God revealing the presence of God in our midst. And we want to experience God and show people how to experience God in our worship, in our singing, in our music, in, in, in worship services, or if we record music or, or play songs or videos. We want to have experiences of touching God through that worship. There have been many times when my wife and I have been helping to uh, lead worship services regularly at our Bible school or other places. And many times, a few weeks after our Bible school classes start and we have worship day after day after day, then the next time that we will meet a pastor or some parents, there have been many times they come up and say, what, do you do to my, what did you do to my son? Or they say, uh, well, well, you know, how did you change my daughter? And we look at them and say, what did we do? How did we change them? Uh, 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 what happened? And they say, oh, we've been working on this problem in their life for so many years. And they go to Bible school and, and they come home two weeks later and it's gone. The problem is gone. They're changed. How did you change them? And we think, we didn't change them. Oh, you didn't talk about their problem or, no. But then we, oh, we didn't change them. But we led them deep into the presence of God in our times of worship. And in the presence of God, God changed that young daughter, that young son. And the pastors, the parents are amazed. We tried to do it for years. Ah, Let's give God a chance. Let's invite him and let God do his great works among us. Amen? Let's invite God to reveal himself, not just to our hearts, but, but let's invite people to church. Let's, let's, let's give them good worship music. Let's, uh, let's bring the presence of God to an empty and needy world. Bring God's presence through our worship. Now, unfortunately, in too many church services, the musicians or the singers use the songs and use the music not always to worship God, but sometimes for entertainment. Have the best band, have the most talented singer, and all the people will come to church. Well, it's important to get people to church, but there's only one person that really has to come. That's God. And entertainment might invite people to church, but God might not come if it's only entertainment, if it's only excitement, if it's only uh, loud or, or talented performances. And just a couple of months ago, I was in the United States in a mega church, and they got lots of people in with their exciting music. And as I was there, the music was so loud, boom, 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 boom. And they were acting so cool, and, and the song leader had to have the right, uh, you know, tears in their jeans and, uh, because they had to be cool with what they were wearing. And, and it was so entertainment as they were just holding their microphones just right in the spotlight. And it was entertainment, and there was not that much worship. And... God's presence I did not feel in that 
church in that service. The music was loud. It was so loud. They had big subwoofers, big bass speakers that were shaking the floor. And as I held my Bible, the Bible pages were actually rattling because of the music hitting it. The pages were warping, and, and I was just holding it, looking at it. I, I had a dancing Bible <laughs> because the music, the, the subwoofers were rattling it and shaking it. And inside your body and your lungs and your heart, wow, this is exciting. But is it spiritual or is it only entertainment? God wants us to reveal his presence in our churches, in our worship. We are to point the people to Jesus, not to ourselves not to our talents. We are to point the people to the presence of the Lord. Now, a third way that we can reveal God is through our lifestyles. Could we have slide 14, please? We can reveal God through our lifestyles. Sa pamamagitan ng ating pamumuhay. Through our lives, through how we live our lives, we want people to be able to see God. And if they see God, and that God is real in your life, they will get hungry for God also. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let the light of God shine through our lives. Many years ago, my, when all of the five children uh, of my parents, I was the, I'm, I'm the bunso, okay? After we all left home, my parents had a very big house, and they didn't need such a big house, so they divided it. They put panels in and divided, and they were going to rent the other half of the house. And they told me they were going to rent part of the house, and let people live there on the large farm area we had. And I thought to myself, oh, good. I started praying, Lord, bring in people that, that will be, I can preach the gospel to. I can tell them about Jesus. And so three young men, about 20, 21 years old, came. And I thought, ah, these are my uh, victims. Uh, no, 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 not victims. No, no, no. These are my opportunities, okay, to tell them about the salvation of Jesus. And yet I felt at first, uh, don't just go on up there and, and, you know, tell them Bible verses. No, first be a friend. So I was a friend the few times, the, the first few times I visited my parents, came home, and was there for a few days, and I met these young men and was friendly to them. And then I'd be gone some months. I'd go visit my parents again and see these young men. And after about a year, I was visiting once, and the Holy Spirit just seemed to witness, just seemed to make it good in my heart. Oh, now go and sit with those three young men. It was evening time, early evening, the sun was going down, a beautiful day. They were out on the porch, just there, just uh, uh, drinking their beers and relaxing near the end of the day. I said, hi, guys, can I come out, sit with you? They said, sure, come on out. And, and when they felt friendly with me, they said, Norman, we've heard these strange stories about you how you had been a, a rock and roll musician and a, a drug dealer and, and all these things. And, and you know, how, how did your life change so much? <laughs> I had been waiting for that question. Okay. They saw there was something different in my life and they wanted to know why. So I told them, it was God working in my life. And we, we sat down about 6 o'clock or 6.30 when the sun was going down at night. And, and after that question, we talked to 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1 o'clock, about 2 o'clock in the morning. They were so hungry for God. 
And then the next day I had to go back to school far away. Next time I came back, they had so many questions. We stayed up midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock at night. And, and the three men that rented the other side of my parents' house all got saved. My wife and I laid hands on some for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, water baptized them. One of them became an assistant pastor. Two of them became the directors of large Christian high schools. And one of those men also became a senior pastor. All three of them met God because they were talking to someone who had met God. And when I shared what was happening through my life, then they got hungry for God too. I can remember years after my oldest daughter left our house, she had grown up, gone to college. She told the story that when she was a little, little girl, then there were times when, when she'd be awake at night and maybe a little afraid, and, and, and she'd come out of her room, and she said she almost always saw Daddy out in the living room quietly praying. And when she saw Daddy out in the living room quietly praying, she would just, she wouldn't be afraid anymore. She just, oh, the world is okay. Ah, yeah, I can go back to sleep. Okay, because Daddy's praying. Okay. Well, that little girl isn't little anymore. Tomorrow, she is being officially installed as the senior pastor of her church in Hawaii. But what started to be planted in her life that she ends up a pastora? Well, she told me that story years later. One thing that really impacted her was just seeing a praying father. We can all reveal God through our lives if God is in your life. So let's let our light so shine before men that they will see our good works. Because after the young people start to meet with God, the church needs to help then train the young people to gain transformed lives. We need to teach them. We need to help show them how to pray, how to worship, how to meet with God and grow in God. And so, the church is first to get the people hungry for God, then feed them the, the water of life, the Holy Spirit, the bread of God, the Bible. And as we teach them, as we build them up, then they are going to be a generation that seeks and finds God and brings other people in to seeking and finding God. Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are truly my disciples, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus said in John 8, the church needs to teach the words of Jesus and pure teaching of the Bible to feed and help people to grow in God. Because not every church teaches the Bible properly. Once I went at a Christmas service, I was visiting a, a church of a relative I was seeing at Christmas time, and we went to their church, and the pastor started the service, God loves you, Jesus loves you, Santa Claus loves you. Ay, 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 ay. Is Jesus equal to Santa Claus? Santa Claus is a myth. It's just a story. It's a fable. Jesus is not a fable. Jesus came to the earth, was born of a virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He rose on the third day and ascended to the Father. He is not a fable. Jesus is alive forevermore and is to live within our lives as we turn to him. 
So that church was full of problems, not full of God. There is another time I was visiting relatives and again going to not so good of a church and the pastor was going to preach from the book of Jonah. Now this pastor, I heard, had been a philosophy professor at a school and then he changed professions. He became the pastor of this church. But for years, most of his life, he had been a philosophy professor. Well, when he became a preacher in this church, he started out reading the story, a little of the story of Jonah in the Bible, and then he said, what I want to explain in my message is it is not important whether a whale swallowed Jonah. What is really important is whether Jonah swallowed the whale. Jonah swallowed the whale? That's the important message. He was preaching at a church, but he was still a philosophy professor. He was still just, ay, ay, ay. He was not preaching the Word of God. And there are preachers that preach part of the Word of God, but unbalanced. And so they don't teach it properly. And their hyper faith or their hyper prosperity or their hyper grace, and it's an unbalanced message that will not grow strong and balanced Christians. We want, by God's grace, to teach the whole Word of God and have it living in our lives. The Word of God in the Bible has the creative power of God to change our lives when we believe and follow it. The power of God is in His Word. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth and was about form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. God spoke and said, let there be light, and there was light. Let there be, and there was. Let there be. God's word created the heavens and the earth. And God's word being spoken into our lives can make us a new creation. No longer a sinful, empty life searching in the world for satisfaction that the world cannot give. But God wants to create within us the life of Jesus, the love of God, the peace of the Holy Spirit, the joy of the Lord. And the Word of God has the creative power to do that. In 1 John chapter 2, 14, the Apostle John wrote, I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the Word of God lives in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Young men and women can overcome sin and the devil if the Word of God lives in them. And so we want, when people get hungry for God, when they start seeking God, then feed them the pure Word of God. Feed them the words of life that can build them up to an eternal inheritance in the kingdom of God. Let's ourselves be filled with God and our lives filled with the balanced teachings of the Bible to cause young people everywhere to get hungry for God so that they will also become filled with God's Spirit and God's Word. My wife got, uh, well, let me tell you a little testimony again. When my youngest daughter was five years old, my parents came to visit us here in the Philippines. And while they were here, there were some uh, missionaries kidnapped, there was some tremors uh, from the earthquake, uh, uh, that was up in Baguio, and uh, they saw Mount Pinatubo and all these problems. And so one day, 
While my wife was in the kitchen washing dishes, she heard my father speak to his five-year-old granddaughter. And he was saying, uh, Esther, you know, there's, there's problems here in the Philippines. There's earthquakes and volcanoes and, and, and there's bad people and there's robbers. And you tell your mom and dad you don't want to live in the Philippines anymore. You want to come back home and live with your grandma and grandpa. So that's what my father was saying when he thought he was alone with her. But my wife overheard, and Esther said, Grandpa, I don't know a lot about earthquakes and, and terrorists and, and, and volcanoes and, and bad people. I'm only five years old. I don't know a lot about that. But there's one thing I know. I know God, and I know God brought us to the Philippines, and I know God will keep us safe. And my father, who was a brilliant scientist, he helped, he was part of the team that developed the atomic bomb back in World War II, the Manhattan Project. He looked at her, a five-year-old, and said, you know God? And she said, yes, I know God. She learned how to know God at a young age from her parents. And that made an impact even on my father to help turn him to the Lord. But just this morning, we got a phone call from our younger daughter. She just got back, uh, just landed in Atlanta in the United States from a missions trip in Egypt because she is the assistant director of missions for a mega church in the United States. And they were just there in Egypt, and, and she is making a difference in the world through her job, through her ministry. And our other daughter, tomorrow, will be ordained as a pastora. They have seen the reality of the life of God in their parents, in the churches they have attended, in the teachings that they have been given. And now they are carrying the torch. They are carrying the baton on to run their race farther than what we have done. My wife and I go, wow, well, you went to Egypt? We haven't been there yet. We, we, we want to get there too, okay? They're carrying on the work of God farther than we have. And that's what we want. We want to raise up a generation that seeks and finds God. But how will they do that? First, we need to seek and find God and show them the reality of God in our lives. So I want to encourage every one of us here today. Let's all get hungry for more of God. Jesus said, blessed are they that hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. Are you hungry for God? Do you want God's purposes for your life, for your family, for the young uh, people in your neighborhood? We want to see God come afresh. Pastor Edwin was talking about a revival that they had uh, in, I think, the TUP, Technical University of the Philippines, where a number of them got saved and became pastors and evangelists. We want to see God move again and again. And you want to see God move in Marikina. You want to see that it will be a place of God. And Marikina has been known as the, in former generations, as the shoe capital of the Philippines, right? I've been blessed with pairs of Marikina shoes. Excellent. Great. Okay. But the thing is, in the Bible, the Bible talks about how we want to have our lives prepared with not natural shoes, but with being able to take the gospel. Shoes are for walking. What should a Christian walk with? Should walk with and take the gospel. Should take 
the news of the love of Jesus, of the salvation of Christ. And God wants to make Marikina a place so full of God that you're going to be making shoes again. Hindi so natural, pero sa espiritu. The shoes of the preparation of the gospel, of Bible teachers, of evangelists, of pastors, of people that know God and will go out of Marikina, even to other provinces and nations, and tell them God is real and he can change your life. So let's seek by God's grace. We will be a people filled with God so that we can help other people to also become hungry and thirsty after righteousness. Amen? So let's pray right now a short prayer, and then we'll see what the rest of the organizers have prepared. Can I ask everyone, please, just to stand? If you want to know God in a deeper way, if you want the people around you maybe even your own children, to know God in a deeper way. Let's start with the prayer, Lord, come into my life in a new way. If you have never repented of your sins before God, or if you have new ones, ask God to wash you clean. Ask God to make you his disciple. And for the rest of us, let's run after God. Let's have a hunger and thirst for God that only the move of God's Spirit can fulfill so that we can see God, a river, not the Marikina River, a river of God flowing through Marikina. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege that we can all gather together and consider how you desire to raise up a godly generation that will seek your face. And Lord, we want to be part of that generation also. Whether young or old, we all qualify in this life, Lord, to be your sons, your daughters that learn to know you, to love you, to serve you. Lord, and I do pray for everyone here, Lord, that you will help us all to, Lord, open up our hearts to you. And Lord, ask that you forgive us of our sins. Ask that you cleanse us of the the wasted hours that we use in our lives. Lord, that you teach us how to follow you more fully. Lord, and that you fill our hearts with more of your grace, of your love, of your joy, of your power, that we can help a younger generation to seek and to find you, Lord God. Seal these desires deep within our heart and teach us your wisdom. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.